Hello everybody, I'm Antonina Blitkova and today I will tell you the story about Cinderella. Once there was a wealthy widow who had one child, a daughter. Like her departed mother, his daughter was gracious, patient and kind. And also like her mother, she was a great beauty, though she had not at once of vanity about her. If she looked in the mirror once a week, it was a great deal, but all he knew, he thought she was as pretty as a princess. The day came when his mother began to long for a wife to keep him company and to help him raise his daughter. And so he married. Though the woman he chose, Mrs. Dufour, wasn't the most pleasant looking of brides. She seemed nice enough at the beginning, but the minute of wedding ceremony was over, she began to show her true nature. She had been nice only long enough to catch a husband. As soon as the wedding bell stopped ringing, she proved herself to be arrogant and mean-tempered. By the next day, she was criticizing the poor man about everything he did. Mrs. Dufour had two daughters of her own, Charlotte and Annette, who were even worse than she was. They were rude and selfish, always fighting with each other and even with their mother. They argued over everything, from who would have the most dessert at dinner to who would get the most expensive dress to wear. Mrs. Dufour could not bear her new stepdaughter. Perhaps it was because the girl was so good, which made her own daughters look even more wicked by comprehension. Perhaps it was because the girl was naturally more beautiful than her own daughters. Whatever the reason, the stepmother began to treat her like a common housemaid. She forced her stepdaughter to do all the worst jobs in the house, scoring the floors and the windows, washing the dishes and cleaning the bedrooms of her new stepsisters. The girl was given clothes to wear and as she worked week after week, they fell to rags. She was made to sleep in a cold, dark, little attic room on a scratchy straw mattress, while her sisters had extravagant bedrooms with four poster beds feather pillows in embroidered cases and full-length mirrors. Because she was always covered with ashes and cinders, the stepmother and her daughters began taunting her by calling her Cinderella. Soon everyone called her that. But Cinderella bore her new life uncomplainingly. She knew there was no point in talking to her father because he was completely ruled by his wife and a friend across her. When she was done working, she would go to the chimney corner where at least it was warm and sit down there exhausted. Her life went on like that for many months, yet in spite of her hardships Everyone who knew her, from the servant in the stable to the neighbors who lived nearby, remarked on Cinderella's good nature and sunny disposition. Then, one day, close to a year after Cinderella's father had married his new wife, the news was announced that the king's son was going to give a ball. All, the, all of society was invited including Cinderella's stepsisters. They were thrilled 
and they immediately say to choosing their gowns, petticoats and hairstyles. This only made more work for Cinderella, because she had to iron every pleat and ruffle off every outfit they tried on. And all they did all day was try on outfits. I'm going to wear my red velvet dress with the French trimming, Charlotte decided finally. And I, declared Annette, shall wear my cloak with the cold flowers. The stepsisters were so cross-tempered and mean that they didn't really make Cinderella work. They also taunted with her their finery. Cinderella, how's my hair? They would say. Won't the other ladies be jealous? Oh, Cinderella, how do these shoes look? Aren't they the most beautiful you've ever seen? Charlotte teased her. Cinderella, wouldn't you like to go to the ball? You are making fun of me, said Cinderella quietly. I know. I could never go. Right, you are, Charlotte snicked. It would be so funny to see Cinderella at a ball. She'd leave a trail of ashes. The two sisters screamed with laughter. Then they ordered Cinderella to fix their hair. Anybody else might have said the mean stepsister's hair askew. However, Cinderella was too nice for that. So she helped them look as pretty as they could, which was not very pretty. But Cinderella was still very sad. How she longed to go to the ball with the other young people of the kingdom. At last, the long-awaited evening of the ball arrived. The stepsisters hadn't eaten a thing for two days, partly from excitement at party, so they would fit into their dresses. When they left for the ball, Cinderella sadly shut the door behind them. Then she went to the corner by the chimney and started to cry. She was and she was interrupted by a voice that sounded like a cross between the gentle tones of an old woman and the bright tickling of the bell. What's the matter, dear? the voice asked. Cinderella looked around, surprised. They're standing in front of her with a short, plump old woman with a pleasant, wrinkled face. She was dressed in beautiful blue robes. I'm your fairy godmother, she said in the strange tickling voice. She waved a long wand on one hand as if to prove her point. Now tell me, she repeated, what's the matter? I wish, I wish I could. Cinderella was weeping so hard that she couldn't continue. You wish you could go to the ball, of course you do, the fairy godmother exclaimed. Yes. Well, said her godmother, do as I tell you, and I promise you we'll have your wish this very night. Cinderella just started at her, just stared at her, not understanding. Could this be real happen? Come, child, said the fairy godmother, snapping her finger. Run out to the garden and bring me your very best pumpkin. Cinderella, Cinderella shook herself to make sure she wasn't dreaming. Then she ran out to the garden and found the biggest, roundest, plumpest 
pumpkin in the whole patch. Whatever can she want these for? She wondered as she cut the wire and struggled to carry the heavy pumpkin to the kitchen. Cinderella's fairy godmother stopped her at the doorway. Just put it down there on the ground, she said with a twinkling in her eye. Then, with a majestic wave of her hand, she lightly touched the pumpkin with her band. Presto! There is its place where the beautiful golden coach fit for a princess to ride in. Now, said the godmother, go and get me a mouse trap. Without hesitation, Cinderella ran as fast as could to the cellar. There was a steel mouse trap. It looked like a little cage, and inside it were six mice alive and squeaking. Cinderella carefully carried the trap back upstairs and gave it to her fairy godmother. Her godmother lifted the door of the little cage and one by one the mice crawled out. As each mouse emerged, the fairy godmother gave it a little tap with her wand and presto. The mouse was transformed into a fine horse. When she was all done, the fairy godmother had created a team of six horses, each a lovely mouse colored gray. Now we need a coachman, said the godmother. Bring me the red trap. Cinderella ran back to the cellar and returned with a red trap, which held three huge rats. Look at this one. He has been nice big whiskers, said her fairy godmother as she let the rats out of the trap. She touched the rat with her wand and presto. There stood a jolly coachman with long shiny whiskers. Now, <clears throat> said the godmother, go back to the garden and look behind the watering can. You will see four lizards. Bring me them. Of when Cinderella quickly repairing with the lizards. One tap for each, and there stood four footmen. They immediately ran to the coach and took their places. Done, cried the fairy godmother, who seemed quite pleased with her work. You are ready to go to the ball. Cinderella looked dejected. Oh, but must I go in this filthy rags? She said. Oh dear, I forgot said her godmother. She touched the girl with her wand and passed her. Suddenly, Cinderella was wearing a beautiful rose-colored gown covered with jewels. And now the last details, said the godmother. She touched Cinderella's rag-wrapped feet and in a twinkle they appeared the prettiest pairs of shoes in the world, and they were made of glass, glass slippers. <coughs> now, said Godmother, go to the ball and enjoy yourself. But before you do, there is one thing you must promise me. You must leave the ball by midnight. If you stay one second longer, the coach will be a pumpkin again, the horses will be mice, the coachman a rat, the footman, lizards, and your clothes will be rags. I promise, said Cinderella, filled with joy. What difference did it make if she had to leave by midnight? As long as she got to go, nothing else mattered. 
Cinderella climbed into the marvelous coach, insisted by one of her elegant footmen. The coachman cracked his whip, and the six beautiful gray horses began to trot. The wheels of the coach clattered against the cobblestones. For the second time that night, Cinderella wondered if she was dreaming. Before she knew it, the coach was pulling into the courtyard of the place. What a wonderful sight! Lords and ladies in their finery were climbing the steps to the great hall. Cinderella almost couldn't wait for her coach to stop. Taking the hand of her footman, she alighted from the coach and seemed to float up the steps. At the entrance to the hall, she stopped and gazed in wonderment at the fine-looking couple tripping about the dance floor as the music played. As she watched, something amazing happened. A hush fell over the room. Everyone stopped dancing, and the orchestra stopped playing. They all turned to shed her. Cinderella felt a moment of fear. Why were they staring? Had her rags returned? No, it was quite the opposite. Everyone at the ball felt they had never seen anyone as beautiful as the girl who stood in the entrance. And then, something more amazing happened. The prince himself walked right up to her and doffed his hat. He too was entranced by the slide of Cinderella. Without a word, he led her to the center of the dance floor. Then, the music started up and they began to dance. As soon as the music was playing again, everyone began whispering about her. All eyes were on the mystery princess as the prince spun her gracefully around the floor. The ladies were a buzz, wondering how to have dresses made that look just like her. Her stepmother and stepsisters were so used to seeing Cinderella in rags that they didn't recognize her in her beautiful new clothing. But they fumed and pouted from the sideline, seething with jealousy. The prince was so enchanted with the mystery princess that he didn't leave her side all evening. Cinderella whirled in his arms for dance after dance as if in a magical world. She wished this night would never end. Bong! What was that? Oh no! The clock was striking twelve. Was striking twelve. Cinderella remembered her promise to the fairy godmother. She must leave the ball by midnight. Without a word of explanation, Cinderella pulled away from the prince and fled, swift as a deer. With the clock striking, she rushed out of the ball, down the steps, and into her waiting carriage. The prince followed, but Cinderella was too fast, so fast in fact that she ran right out on one of her glass slippers. The prince picked it up carefully as she disappeared into the night. And not a moment too soon, just as the coach pulled out of sight of the play palace, the magic spells began to wear off. Poof! went her beautiful dress. Poof! went her carriage. Poof! went the horses turned back into mice, and the coachman into a rat, and the footman into a lizard. Cinderella was left alone in the road, dressed once more 
in rags. She ran home as fast as she could. When she got there, she had nothing left but one of the little glass slippers. As she entered her room, in the attic, her fairy godmother was waiting. You did leave at midnight, did you? She said with an annoying smile. Not quite, said Cinderella, abashed. But I wish you could have seen it. It was so beautiful, and the prince was so. Just then, there was the sound of another carriage arriving at the front of the door. It was her stepmother and stepsisters. I will be here if you need me, the fairy godmother said with a nod. Then she vanished. Cinderella ran through the house and opened the door. You really stayed late, she said, rubbing her eyes, pretending she'd been sleeping. It's too bad you couldn't go to the ball, said Charlotte. The finest princess was there. It will have to invite her for tea. What was her name? asked Cinderella. Nobody knows, answered Annette. The prince would dearly love to find out. Cinderella smiled. She must be very beautiful. I wish I could see her. The next morning, the palace guide were questioned. Had they seen a princess on the road from the palace? Nobody, they replied. But a young girl in Rex, a poor county girl. A few days later, trumpets sounded throughout the kingdom. The proclamation. A messenger from the prince would travel from town to town with the dainty glass slipper. And when he found the girl who could fit into it, the prince would marry her. That very morning, all the finest ladies assembled in the town square to be ready to try on the slipper. Of course, the stepsisters were there with their mother. They didn't notice the Cinderella followed behind. All the princes tried it, and then the duchesses, and then all the other fine ladies. But the slipper fit none of them. Finally, the stepsisters had their turn. They fussed and they jumped, but there was no way their feet would fit into that slipper. Let me see if it will fit me, came the voice from the back of the crowd. It was Cinderella. Her stepsisters burst out laughing, but the messenger took a good look at Cinderella, and he had eyed enough to see a great beautiful under the rags and grime. I, had, I have orders to let everyone try, he announced. He had Cinderella sit down, and then he knelt with a glass slipper. It slid on as if it had been made for her, as of course it had. There must be a mistake, howled Charlotta. It can't be her. Not possible, said Mrs. Duffer. Smiling, Cinderella pulled the magic slipper out of her pocket and put it on her other foot. And then, who should appear but the fairy godmother? To the wonderment of the crowd, she touched her wand to Cinderella's claws, and instantly she was dressed in a gown more mag magnificent than the one she had worn to the ball. Finally, Cinderella stepsisters saw who she was. They threw themselves at her feet and begged her pardon for the terrible way they had treated her. And because she had a true and generous nature, Cinderella hugged them and forgave them. When the prince heard the news, 
he was overjoyed. His princess had been found. A few days later, there was a joyous wedding at the palace, and the prince and his bride were wed. The girl let her stepsisters come and live in the palace, where they were treated with respect and never ever made to clean the floors. As for Cinderella, she became a kind and thoughtful princess, who was well loved by all the subjects of the land, and most especially by the prince. And of course, they lived happily ever after. This is the end. If you like the fairy tale, please put some up. Goodbye. See you next time.